we have columns of numbers based on dates. Here's the name of the cows. There's a morning shift, an evening shift, and a total row. Not only that, but we have 12 of these cross-tabulated tables, and we need to convert them to a proper data set so we can make a pivot table report. You can download this Excel workbook to follow along. On each one of the sheets, we have a different month, the same cross-tabulated table. On the sheet report, this is where we're going to build our final pivot table report. Now, last video, 1626, and yes, the numbers are out of order here, we saw some great tricks about how to bring sheets of data, meaning these sheets do not have Excel tables. So last video, we saw how to bring all this data from different sheets into Power Query. And below the comment software train left a cool tip that will allow us to bring the sheet data into Power Query with fewer steps than we saw in the last video. And because we'll have a more complicated task trying to unwind each one of those cross tab tables, unlike last video, we'll have to build a Power Query reusable custom function. Now, just like we did last video, and you can go back and watch it if you didn't see how to do this, here's an Excel worksheet formula that will always get the correct file address for this file. Now, I saved the file, closed it, and opened it back up, and there the file path has changed. Our goal is to bring all the sheets into a proper data set. But before we do that, we actually have to do a transformation on one of these to get the cross-tabulated table into a proper data set. Then once we have that code, we can use it on all the sheets of data that we import. So our first step is to bring this file path into Power Query. Now, I have already used a defined name to name cell J2 file path. That allows us to go up to Data, Get and Transform, which is Power Query, and click the From Table button. And just as we did last video, we're going to remove the first two steps. I'm going to rename the query something like Data in Proper Data Set. This is a table, and we need to get that file path as a text string. So we come up to that formula element, which is delivering the table. We need to look up the first record. Power Query is base 0, so we use our positional index operator to look up a row. 0, that tells Power Query the first row. Close curly bracket. When I hit Enter, I get the record. Now I need to extract the column. We use our field access operators. And inside, we type the name of the column, close square bracket, and Enter. Now there's our file path, and we have a single step. Now, last video, we used file.contents on this to get the Excel file, but we did it all in one step. What we want to do now is use file.contents and add a new step. What Software Train said is something magic happens if you add a new step. So we come up to the formula bar. I click the F of X button. I see source. That's the previous step. File.contents, open parentheses. Close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, watch what Power Query does. File.content, it added Excel.workbook to the outside. File.contents got the actual Excel file. Excel.workbook went into that file and pulled out all the objects. Now, when we add Excel.workbook automatically like this, the second argument is set to null. That means please do not promote the first row as headers or field names. And that's what we want in this case. The third argument, true, instructs Excel.workbook to not infer from Excel what the data types are. And when you have this set to true, the performance is better. Those two arguments and their defaults are perfect for us. In the kind column, we can see we have two types of objects, sheets and a defined name. You can also have tables. In the item column, you can see the name of each object. Now, we only want to import sheet objects. So from the drop down, we uncheck define names, click OK. Up in the formula bar, we can see equals sheet object only. We also want to exclude any sheet with the name report. So I uncheck Report, click OK. Up in the formula bar, I can see Item, which has our object name, not Report. Now, each one of these tables sits in each row, and these are the cross tabs. We actually are going to close and load, close and load to, only create a connection, click OK. 
Now I'm going to come up and double click. And over on the left, we're going to keep this query and then do the transformation. But I want to duplicate the code, get at exactly one of the tables, build the code for that one table, and then we'll use it as a custom function on every row to transform every single one of these cross tabs. So to duplicate the code, I'm going to right click, duplicate, F2 to rename it. We'll call it build function and enter. Now, these steps are exactly the same as we did in our first query. We do not need filter row, so I'm going to X that out, because we only want to get at this very first table to use to build our code. There's custom one step. I want to take the result, which is a table, create a new step based on that. So I click F of X, and I'm trying to do a two-way lookup, row 0, column data. So up in the formula bar, positional index operator for 0, field access operator on the column data, and Enter. Now here's the cross tab we can use to transform. I don't want this step, so I'm going to exit out. The very first step we need to do is take the first row and promote it to headers. So up in the upper left, I click the drop down, use first row as headers. I don't want this change type either. Now we have this name column, but the problem is it has the cow name all the way down. It has total, and it has shift. Our goal is to get cow name in a single column and shift and remove total. So we'll come up to the filter drop down, look through the list. We're trying to find total and uncheck. Click OK. Now we have that step. Now to get a new cow column, we're going to come up to Add Column, Conditional Column, and the new name will be Cow Name. And we want to build a logical test based on the name column right there. And we can choose different ways to do this. Contains, Shift. I'm going to do Ends with Shift. That, of course, assumes that we're always going to have the correct five letters and no space. So I'm going to type that here. So if it ends with Shift, I want to put Null. Otherwise, we come down here, say select a column, and the column we want is name. Now when I click OK, cow name. Now all we need to do is fill down. Right click, fill down. Now the next step is we want cow name first, then we want name, which will eventually be called shift. All the other columns have to be unpivoted into a column for dates and numbers. So I'm going to select the columns in the correct order, cow name, scroll over, holding control, and name. Now the cool thing about right click, unpivot other columns, is some months will have 29 days, some 28, some 30, 31. And by using this unpivot other columns, all the dates and all the numbers will end up in those two columns. Now up in the formula bar, we don't want to name those two columns attribute and value. So double click attribute, date, double click value. And this is the cow milk, and then whatever the unit is. So we're getting table.unpivot other columns to name those columns. Now we need to filter to remove those blank rows. I'm going to click Load More. Scroll down. There it is, blank. Uncheck. Click OK. There's yet another step. Now we want to change the data types, decimal, date, click. Hold Control or Shift, right click, change type, and down to text. Now we come up to Home, Close and Load, Close and Load 2. And we're going to load this as a connection only. Now the code in this query can be used to transform every table in the first query. I want to open it back up, so I double click. We're going to leave this as a connection only query in case we need to come back and edit the code. But now I want to duplicate this and create an actual function. Right click, duplicate, F2, FX for function, cross tab to proper table, and Enter. Now we come up to Home, Advanced Editor. And the only steps we need are Promote Header all the way to the end. So I'm going to highlight the very first steps. There's three lines, Delete, and now we have the code that will transform each one of those cross-tabulated tables. The only problem is that is the first argument for table.promoteHeaders, which is our first step. So if we could somehow get each one of those cross-tabulated tables into that argument, then the rest of these steps would convert the cross-tabs into a proper data set. And the way you do that is you define a custom function with a variable that we're going to use in the first argument of table.promoteHeaders. So above the let, we're going to, in parentheses, define our variable. We'll call it input table.
close parentheses, and the variable has to be in parentheses. Then you use the go to operator, equal sign, greater than. And if we take the variable and place it somewhere in here for us, it's the very first argument. Now we have a variable, the go to operator, and the mapping for that variable. Together, that makes up a custom function that we can use over and over. By using this syntax right here, when I click Done, Power Query knows this is a function that we can use over and over. We can use this anywhere in Power Query. So I come up to our first query, and there's all the tables. I just need to add an extra column. So I come to Add Column, Invoke Custom Function. We'll name the new column something like Create Proper Table. There's our function. And it looks like it got it right, because from the dropdown, it's selecting a column. The Data column right there has our table. So when I click OK, now for each row, that is amazing. It took every one of these cross-tab tables and converted it to a proper data set. Now I want to take all these tables and append them one on top of the other. So I come up to the F of X button. That's the entire previous step. At the end, please give me create proper table. That's the name of the field close square brackets. By using a field access operator after a table, it extracts this column as a list. When I hit Enter, there's all of our tables. Now I can use table.combine, open parentheses. And now, from that list of tables, when I hit Enter, that is absolutely amazing. I have one proper data set from 12 different cross-tabulated tables. Now, this is connection only, so I'm going to click Close and Load. Now, I want to change the load location. So right click, Load to. We're going to load this proper data set to a pivot table cache. And we want this pivot table on an existing sheet. So I come down and I click on Report. Select A1 in the Report Sheet. Click OK. Over here, I can see my field names. Uh-oh, we made a mistake. The Name column is supposed to be named Shift. Double click the first query. On the left, we have the build function query and our reusable function. But look over here in Applied Steps. This is only one step. Because when we originally duplicated build function and then added the go to operator, it converted it to a function that lists only one step. So we don't have the ability to rename the column here unless we go up to the Advanced Editor and type it out manually. Rather than do that, we left a trail. Selecting Build Function, now I have my complete list of applied steps. I can edit them how I want. With the last one selected, I'm going to double click Name, type Shift, and Enter. I see the new step there. It's definitely reflected up in the Advanced Editor. But uh-oh, when I change something here, it didn't automatically reflect it down in our function. So with Build Function selected, Let's go up to Advanced Editor. The let statement here starts with let. Each one of these is the name of the step in Applied Steps. When there's a space in the name, they have to use a pound and double quotes to indicate that's the name of the step. After the equal sign is the line of M code. At the end of each line is a comma, except for the last one. We leave that comma out, put in, Relist the name of the last step, and that becomes the output. Now, we didn't really need to know all that, but we want from change type all the way to the end, copy, done. Now we come down, and I need to go up to Advanced Editor. So instead, I'm going to right click Advanced Editor, highlight, Control V. Now, that was a lot of manual copying and pasting. Next video, I'll show you how to create a more automated process. But for the time being, we have what we need. Click Done. Now when we close and load, click the Refresh button. And now we have Shift as the correct name. For the report, we want date in the rows. Drag months off, then the cow name, then the shift. We want to sort this so morning is first, Z to A. We drag milk down to values, morning, evening, total. We drag milk down to values a second time. Right click, show values as, and we want difference from. We want difference from the morning to the evening shift. Click OK. We'll change the label. Drag milk down a third time. Right click, 
show values as, and percent difference from. We want morning. Click OK. We'll change the label. And we're done with our pivot table report. So we went from 12 cross-tabulated tables. We had one query to pull all of the sheet data in. We created a query where we transformed one of the tables. We converted it to a reusable custom function. Then we used that custom function in a column in our first query to create one proper data set. After we loaded it to a pivot table cache, we made our report. All right, if you like that video and you want to learn more about M code and Power Query functions, check out this video.